hundred years ago, poverty was the um, equaliser. If you were poor, it didn't matter whether you were a man, woman, animal, vegetable. But don't you think that, you know this, this one thing that you say, what's your name? Kate. Kate. You know that one thing you said about that historically women were oppressed? Yes. Don't you think that's a bit of an overstatement though? No. So I would suggest that the lack of education for women, uh, maybe 200 years ago, the lack of um, vocational opportunity, so not even which job would they have, they wouldn't have a job, they would be either caring for elderly relatives, caring for their own children, dying young no, but, okay, in childbirth. But why would caring for children be like a housewife, yeah. right? Like, I agree with you in terms of pay equality. I don't think there's anything wrong with... Being, being a housewife, I think it's a good job. thing. But for unmarried women, for spinsters, as they were called before, like elderly aunts and widowers, uh, widows rather, they didn't. They couldn't then say, oh, do you know what, I'm going to get a job. But rich women could. They could be novelists. But isn't that a social issue, not yes. an issue and of... society is the one that was discriminating against women. So it's not, I'm not saying that... God or some other agency was stepping in. It was for sure society that was male dominated by the fact that for the vast majority, apart from the Victorian age, we had kings and they deemed that everything was fine with, you know, and men were able to earn more money, they were able to provide, they were also able to uh, neglect, beat, um, treat women as second class citizens. Are you sure religion doesn't play a role in that? Yeah, yeah, it does. It, like it has done. Like for example, in the Old Testament times, you know, the women were considered chattel, so they would be inherited along with the property. If we go in Old Testament, we can go Quran as well, I suppose. Yeah, we can go but Quran. Yeah. In the so, Quran, I don't think no, you know, I agree, but what they I mean, were considered as property. And also in the New Testament, yeah. the women, do they have the right to divorce? My claim is that society, that is always, well not always, but historically, I would say the majority of the world is run by non-secular um, figureheads. And yes. Things. So the king would be a Christian or the I can't think of the appropriate word that in Muslim countries the, yeah. yeah the caliph would <laughs> it's a job requirement you've got to be a Muslim the Pope is definitely Catholic so the head men were of a certain religious viewpoint but they would then twist the scriptures or not twist them maybe not knowingly but according to the so obviously 7th century Arabia as compared to 14th century France as opposed to Rome at the beginning of you know Christianity so all of those times are snapshots but they in themselves are not solely influenced by the scripture of the time that it's the exegesis from the men who I'm not a feminist by the way but it's thank God the, it's the men who <laughs> disseminate the, no, I do thank God quite often, all the time um, yeah so it's the men who are disseminating the scripture and then passing it down to the courtiers and yeah. to the parliamentarians and to sure so could, couldn't we look I don't have so much of an issue with some of the like the problems the feminists raise. I agree with the problems, but not the solutions. So, like the problems, like all of them. Not not all of the issues. No, like domestic violence stuff like this. But one thing which I don't agree with them at all is that yes, men have done bad things to women throughout history. However, men have done great things for women throughout history too. So, for example, in World War One, men died for women, and if a man was shell shocked and he didn't want to fight, he'd be shot to death. Yeah. But he would still go out and stuff yeah. like this. Women weren't forced to go out. So, so this stuff isn't appreciated. I think that's the, the part of the argument which obviously falls down anyway, but it's not looked at because so um, it's only a societal structure that deems women to be kind and meek and gentle, although there are those qualities like required for child rearing and just being a genuine... But don't you think that's kind of true people. as well? That women are kinder. I was about to say men were expected to uh, not cry, uh, be strong, go off to war without a moment's notice, um, work maybe three jobs to support a ten-child household. So that isn't spoken about because men still today want to uphold an image of strength so they don't want to admit that, they, that they're equally as vulnerable to... I don't know, global war, for example. Like, nobody really wants... I wouldn't imagine that anybody is chomping at the bit to go off, apart from the arms manufacturers, <laughs> yes. to, like, to have a war. Whereas women will be waving off their sons. There were campaigns, propaganda campaigns, aimed at women, saying, what's your husband doing today? Why isn't he off at the front? Uh, why don't you have a little word with him over dinner, love? Like, that kind of thing. So, it's a joint effort. Women are never out of the equation when it comes to pressuring men into acting macho and yeah. providing for things. Yeah. So, I think that because that's glossed over, 
all of the male sacrifice that's gone on, women are then have a platform to say, oh, but by the way, I broke a nail and nobody called an ambulance. And so there's that extreme nonsense. There's also the, I don't know, the grouping of LGBT and da 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 da, and then women kind of get thrown in because they're also obviously oppressed just because white, straight males, cisgender, something neutral, I don't even know because I think it's coddled. But it seems that one group of men in the hierarchy are the worst, old white men with money. Then it goes men in general. Then it's maybe, I don't know, rich women. And, and it kind of goes yeah. down the system. So I don't believe there's a case that, at least in the in Western society, for sure in, in societies where women are regular, like certain Asian countries I know of where like yeah. up to 80% of the women experience domestic violence as reported. That for sure needs to change. So no, those countries that have a case for feminists, why don't the feminists pop over there with their comfortable shoes and their dodgy haircuts and go and like empower those women rather than bleating on in a country where even the most disadvantaged people have an opportunity to come out of their disadvantages mm. rather than, yeah, I think the case is one here as in equality. But don't you think rather than feminism, there needs to be a team effort? So, for example, when you say, like, there's an African uh, academic who said this, that feminism doesn't fit African values because the African experience is not based on an individual. It's like a village or a, a whole society. So when you say feminism, you've automatically created a dichotomy. Yeah. And you know, have you seen the recent song? Katie, right? Okay. Okay, okay. The recent song from Chile about, um, like... It's, it's, a, it's a viral song about the man is the rapist, the man is the judge. The I'm clearly not down with the youth at the moment. So yeah, so no. th that, that is like the feminist anthem for the march, right? It's, it's men hating. Men when hating, men yes. Do it, misogynists will be called out and labelled and harangued and henpecked. That's a probably non PC kind of term to use. But I don't see why it's any. If you want equality of opportunity, then you need to be able to be called a feminist in a non positive sense. Yes. In the sense of why are you just man bashing for the, when you could be doing something useful, go and do some knitting, or I don't even know what they could be doing because it's none of my business. But yeah, I just think it says so in the Bible God made men and women equally. It says actually man, but he created male and female. So they've got different roles, which doesn't equate to different rights and responsibilities yeah. within the family, within society. We've all got a role. And as so you're fine with gender roles? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah, that's God, good. Okay. Might, God, God said so, so I'm not about to rock that boat. And you know, one thing which I uh, uh, speak to people about is that a housewife is a respectable thing. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Do you know what happened in this country, for sure, the welfare state encouraged, promoted, um, skewed the, their policies towards single parent households. So they, so there was, there were cases, For capitalistic reasons? Um, I don't know. There were cases where women, it was more financially beneficial to declare that the man wasn't there, even if he secretly was there. You got extra money for being a single parent household. Yes, yes. And therefore, where's the equality of opportunity for men to become productive members of a household? How is society deeming marriage as quite old-fashioned and oh, you don't really need to because the divorce rates were maybe so high? Yeah. Because you're, fina you're financially motivated to be single again. Yeah. And I mean, single, ma uh, single parent households happen and there's nothing scripturally, there is something wrong with that, but societally, there's, there's no shame at least anymore in being a single mother. Uh, because it could be through death, divorce, any of those reasons. But it shouldn't ever be promoted. It yeah, absolutely. Ever be aspired to. Absolutely. You know, because then it's the victimhood status again. It's, well, I come from a broken home. And yeah. I came from an inner city count. In the 70s, maybe the 60s, they started using words like problem families. Um, problem child. Yeah, and council estates in a derogatory. The first council estates were lauded as places, you know, they took out these slum dwellings running water and you know obviously the, the original inhabitants couldn't move back because it was too expensive but they at least made the effort to equalize the playing field and then decided to withdraw any support put lots of 
immigrants from the same background, I'm sure from a genuinely sympathetic reason to put them together because maybe they'd feel more secure. Home. But then there's no diversity, there's no integration because diversity doesn't look like a lot of northerners living, living in one place in yeah. London, a lot of Pakistani people here. It just looks like little ghettos. Or, yeah. So I don't think it quite works. Not to say that it was part of some like, plan. curious plan. It was a plan, but I think it may have been genuine. Yeah, no, it's genuine. But at the same time, it doesn't help because you get people who've lived here for years and years who can't speak the language, and it's a shame for them because there's that much literature. There's just day to day. I'm trying to learn a language at the moment, and <laughs> it's difficult. It's yeah, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So, yeah. But at the same time, it's worthwhile because when yeah. someone's giving you that look like, what, and you can actually say it back to them in their own language, it's yeah. <laughs> and, unless they just offer you a kettle or something, you realise you've gone way off track. But, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, so Sabur. 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 S U B B O O R. Okay. So, Kate, is it your faith that makes you more inclined to be conservative with gender uh, roles and these things? Do you think it's that? I would say when I was slightly more left of the political spectrum than I am now, I was less Christian, uh, less uh, committed to my faith. I think that the idea of equality has gone completely wonky. So, yeah, I would say so, yes, for sure. My faith um, dictates to me everything, I suppose. My world view completely shifted when I was firmly committed to Christ, in that I was unafraid to call out um, the persecution of Muslims, Christians, that kind of thing. Whereas before, I would be, because of diversity and multiculturalism, I had to accept that all cultures were equally valid, even if they were stoning women to death, even if they were, um, I don't know, you know, cutting off people's hands or just any series of events, as long as it's labelled cultural rather than religious, because that just went out of the window, then we all have to accept they're all equal, and I don't believe they are. I think that if I started a culture where children were killed at birth, where they, you know, in some, I don't know about nowadays, but in some African tribes, young children are just, on you go, like left to fend for themselves, or I think maybe South America. So I don't think that culture is equal in that respect of child care to my own culture and I think my own culture has been heavily influenced by Christianity although sadly not as much now and I see the value of Christian influence on societies yeah. definitely growing you know, really, to kill babies. Yeah. Recently I was reading uh, The Strange Death of Europe by Douglas Murray I like him. and he spoke about that basically the, Christ, the Christianization of the Western world is the reason why we have the Western world as we have it today, but since Christian, be a good or a bad thing. yeah, well, it's a bad thing from the perspective that since people have left Christianity, it's kind of like a child with inheritance who's squandering it without realizing that the value, the value of it. Now, I went when I went to school in the 1990s. Uh, the, the school is very much still Christian, so we used to sing like he's got the whole world in his hands and all that stuff. And classics. classics, right? And what was funny is that my teacher, I remember openly, she was a Christian, she used to say abortions, murder, and she used to just say these things. Today she'd be lynched. Like, you know? And so even Jermaine Greer was recently um, shunned, I think, booed off stage maybe last year because uh, she wouldn't accept that a transgender woman was a woman. And like biologically it's obvious, like just, I could cut my nose off, but I'm not a no-nose person, I'm a person who used to have a nose who now does like my biology doesn't So do you think it's the, like one of the arguments that's being made, even by Douglas Murray who's an atheist, is that the Western world needs a, a Christian oxygen, yes, right? It needs to re I believe that we need to reclaim our heritage in as much as... So I know people who've decided, uh, I know people who've passed away, as far as I know, believing that uh, some sort of higher power exists, but it could be the trees, it could be the, All the, uh, the sunshine. Post-modern yeah, stuff, yeah. It could be anything, and that, it made it help. It, it may have enabled them to live better lives because they're centered, but it won't help with their salvation. So I think that when we stopped believing in the next world, we lost this world, if that makes sense. Yes, you know, uh, Nietzsche, yep. he spoke about the true world. Yep. So he said throughout history and Western history, he said we had this idea of the true world, which is heaven. Yep. 
and we have this world. And he said that as soon as we left Christianity, and he's talking about like 110 years ago, uh, late Victorian times, that he has this analogy of the madman. Do, have you heard of it? So, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So he has this um, example of a mad guy who runs into the marketplace saying, where's God? And this is supposed to be an analogy of Western society. And they laugh at him because they've become atheistic. They used to be Christian. So then he basically realizes that God is dead. God is dead from the perspective oh, yes, that, yeah. Have, yeah. So then he starts telling them. But let me just say sure. for the record, Nietzsche is now dead. Yes. <laughs> God isn't, yeah. so God wins. Yeah. Yep. So what happened was the guy, uh, he started telling them, since we have killed God and we are the murderers of murderers, what are we going to do with our life? What is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? And he starts talking about nihilism, that everything is meaningless. And the people don't understand him. So in frustration, he breaks the lamp and he says, I've come too early. As in, you guys don't recognize what happens when you leave faith. Yeah. So Nietzsche said within 100 or 200 years, Western civilization will go through an existential crisis because right now they're intoxicated by Christianity. Yes, oh, and at that time, so yes. Yeah. So he said that's when they're gonna panic and they're gonna go through a crisis. And Douglas Murray and other atheists now they're recognizing the Western civilization is on the decline because it's lost out on faith, not because of economics or something else. Because look, it's Christianity. Because you know, atheists say to me, atheists, yeah, yeah, atheists say to me that. Look at how great the Western world is. And I say to them, Actually, anything... Also, what I would posit to an atheist is that it's just a randomly moving set of molecules. Yeah. What do you mean great? What but, is your objective? Greatness? Yes, but you, could, but, but you could also say to them, anything good in the Western world is actually a remnant of Christianity. Anything good is of God, because that's scriptural. Faith. And therefore, the, the less uh, Christianity, which I believe is the true way to God, is demonstrated at least, because children are told through a series of subtle and over messaging to dishonor their parents, which is one of the commandments not to do that. So, for example, cartoons and Peppa Pig and stuff that <laughs> I was forced to enjoy when my child was growing up. Um, it's always, you know, it's just basically saying, oh, silly daddy, silly mummy, like, it's not, you know, uh, the state wants to be parent, and the state wants to be the employer, and the state wants to be, from the cradle to the grave, they literally want to have people who are reliant upon them, therefore, when their discretions come to light, there's nothing many people can do, because they're afraid to lose the security that they may or may not have when they reach pension age anyway. Mm. So I think that... The obfuscation of um, Christian values. So not even Christianity, although I would obviously support, I don't support forced Christianity, but I would suggest that, for example, in Nigeria, where pastors are being regularly slaughtered by ISWAP, Boko Haram, those kind of people, I would say that if we have a, a shortened queue of immigrants because of Brexit, for example, Christian, um, persecuted Christians should come towards the top of the list for the sole reason that we are a, an alleged Christian country. And therefore, Islamic countries can for sure, you know, rush forward and help their Islamic brothers when they're coming from war to war. How do you think we can bring, because look, what I speak to atheists about, I usually speak to uh, them. Do you give da'wah like Yeah, regularly? to atheists, usually. Yeah. Do you check with them first? What do you mean? Do you ask them, are you an atheist, or do you just like surmise from No, answers? no, I mean, you, you have a conversation, you realize what they yeah. believe. Now, the thing is, what I'm trying to explain to them is that if you leave faith, any faith, in which you have Nietzsche's idea of the other world, the, the true world, Life is meaningless. And if life is meaningless, then when you get a young teenager who lives on a council estate, who's like, you know, screw everyone, I'm going to do what I want, you know, that's a product of a lack of faith. Yeah. If you notice, my grandparents' generation, for example, even though now people sort of sneeringly look back at that age where they had corporal punishment in schools, where they were... Caning. Maybe, yeah, yeah, for sure. Going out maybe at 12, 
uh, to go to work. Um, you know, many of them were evacuated during the war. And yet they didn't have gangs of, even though a lot of them were dead after the second world, they didn't have gangs of youths roaming around, stabbing each other. Um, You'd you never know. mug a pensioner. Exactly. So the, and yeah. the thing of the doors open, I can see this because everybody was poor, so you shouldn't leave your door open because you didn't have anything anyway. But that generation turned out. I don't, please God we do, but I don't think we'll see another generation of that caliber because of the extenuating circumstances they went through, but also because of the way they were raised. And even if you go further back to the time of maybe Tyndale, the Reformation, Henry VIII, um, even you know the abolition of the monasteries, that era, that era rather, people were certain of eternity. They were certain yeah. that their soul had two options. Had a value. It may be purgatory, but two options only, and that was eternity, either in eternal death or eternal life worshiping God. And it was real to them. And due to that, people self-policed. They oversaw their own morality because they were afraid. If the Bible says, fear not he who can uh, kill the body, but...